shall we pray together our god and our father we thank you because death is an entrance into eternal life for before the seed dies it cannot germinate our father and our god we stand before you lord with heavy hearts and yet with the great assurance of the heavenly glory that our brother has inherited father we thank you for each one of us Father, we thank you for the judiciary family that have lost such a dear member. We want to pray for encouragement and strength. We thank you for the government of Uganda, the government that your servant has served. But Father, as a church, we mourn and grieve for one that has been among us. But Lord Jesus, we thank you because your word reminds us that we should not mourn like those who do not have hope. We are hopeful, Lord, because we know where our dear brother has gone. Thank you for charity and the rest of the children. Father, we pray for them and we ask that you strengthen them. We surrender to you, our God and our Father. We pray that during this time, consume our emotions, Lord. Control our thoughts, Jehovah, that, Lord, will turn our hearts to you and listen to you alone. In Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. We shall stand and turn to page 7. Those of us that have got uh, these books, uh, praise and worship books of uh, All Saints Cathedral, the song number 13 on page 7, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine.
as we gather in this place this evening, those of us that clearly know the story of Justice Kenneth, we will testify that he surely while was alive and energetic, he was filled with the goodness of the Lord. Amen. He lived a life that demonstrated that he was lost into the Lord. I would like us to sing that last stanza again and meditate on our own walk with the Lord and look back and say, God, thank you that while now gone, but when he still lived, that he surrendered his life to the Lord, he served the Lord, he continued to look above waiting on his God. Chris sings stanza three again. Perfect submission All these at rest I in my Savior Am happy and blessed Watching and waiting Looking above Filled with his goodness Lost in his love this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior, oh that he This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. Let us sit and we continue to pray. Lord, it is our prayer this evening as we gather in this home, this wonderful home, wonderful children left here, wonderful mother and charity Kakulu left here, wonderful relatives here, great friends seated here, Meditating on this life, upon this life, about this life of a friend that is now with you. That just as his story is that of him being with a Savior, happy and blessed, may that be my story, may that be our story. That as long as we are in this world, Lord, you will continue to watch and wait as we look above until you are God, despite the many challenging circumstances that we face every single day. Lord, fill us with your goodness. Help us, Lord, to be lost in your love. And in the love of Christ, Lord, give us hope that one day we shall overcome because you have come in Christ Jesus our Lord, we pray. Yes, Christo Akajrati, Ninyok Zoka, Kandi, Ninya Magara. Limun Tuena, or Christi Zomlinye, Nobuyo Kufa, Adiago Mahuliri. Kandi no go, O Uliri, or Christi Zomlinye, O go, Talifa. The Lord Jesus Christ said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet he shall continue to live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Friends, we brought nothing into the world. We take nothing out of this world. The Lord gave us a wonderful friend in the late Justice Kenneth Kakuru. And the Lord has taken away. So Lord, blessed be your holy name. 
the Apostle Paul continues to affirm in Romans chapter 8, verse 38 to 39. I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Lord, our faith and our hope is only in you. So, Heavenly Father, in your Son, Jesus Christ, you have given us a true faith and a sure hope. Strengthen this faith and hope in us all, in all our days, especially for the children in this home and for our sister, Mama Charity. That we may live as those who believe in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins and the resurrection to eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. I'm going to request us again to stand as we honor the Lord, as we reflect on the words of Psalm 23. Please let's stand as we honor the Lord, as we reflect on the words of Psalm 23. And those of us that are of uh, this prayer book, we could read this together. Psalm 23, it's on page 2. Together. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He will refresh my soul and guide me in right paths for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and staff comfort me. You spread a table before me in the face of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Please let's take our seats, and I'll invite uh, our brother Elia to take a reading, from which we'll be sharing with someone this evening. Praise the Lord, brethren. A reading of the day is taken from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 20. I'll use the NIV version. St. John, chapter 20, verse 1 to 19. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and other disciples, the one Jesus loved and said they have taken the lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him so peter and the other disciples started for the tomb both were running but the other disciple outran peter and reached the tomb first he bent over and looked at the strips of linen lying there but did not go in then simon peter who was behind him arrived and went into the tomb he saw, he saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand the scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to, the, to their homes. But Mary stood outside the tomb, crying as she wept. She bent over to look into the tomb and saw the two angels in, in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. 
They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said. I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was a ga the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell, he, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these very things to her. Verse 19. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors lock, locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Brethren, this is the word of the Lord. Tell your neighbor, peace be with you. Peace be with you. When the Lord is in control, peace be with us all. Praise the Lord. This particular song we are going to sing while seated. It is a song that many times when you gather in a meeting like this, we sing. But sometimes maybe we sing it without really picking the meaning of it and digesting it and applying it to our lives. In a circumstance like this, knowing that the man that we are crying, as we say bye to, has lived with the Lord Jesus. We believe that Justice Kenneth Kakuru would want to say to his family, He that is embraced in the, harm, in the arms, in the hands of the Lord, has nothing to fear. Song 93 on page 36. Song 93 on page 36 and after this song, our dear provost will be coming to share with us the message of comfort. Praise the Lord. <laughs> God our Father, we are in your hands tonight. Lord, we pray that you hold our hands because we are weak. We want to ask for your strength, your grace, and your mercy. But above all, Father, we pray that your word will minister to us at such a moment as this. Lord, speak into our lives. 
Lord, do not leave us desperate, God. Gather our thoughts and put our hearts together. But above all, Lord, remind us about our own journey to eternity. That, Lord Jesus, as we see our friend, our brother, Lord, going, we know that one day we will go. Father, give us the grace to examine our lives and understand our own journey and our destiny. And now, Lord, as I speak, I pray that you speak to me and speak through me, and will you be glorified in Jesus Christ we have prayed. Amen. We're going to share from the reading which we've had uh, from John chapter 20. But before we get into that reading, one of the things that I'm going to be sharing is seeing the Lord in difficult circumstances. Are we able to see the Lord when situations are difficult, as difficult as they are right now? Can our sister Charity be able to see the Lord at such a moment as this? Can the children be able to see the Lord at a moment as this? The resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ brought a lot of hope to the disciples. But it also brought anxiety and confusion that it threw this lady called Mary into tears. And when you read verse 11 of chapter 20, Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. And as she wept, she stooped and looked into the tomb. When we get in moments like this, confusion comes in our lives, tears flow endlessly, pain is too unbearable, and many times we do not know what to do. And that is why the psalmist in Psalm 23 continues to remind us that when we go through the valley of the shadow of death, I will be with you. And so as we go through a moment like this, we remember that the Lord was with us. For those of us that have been close to Honorable Justice Kenneth Kakuru, we know his testimony and his life. And for us as All Saints Cathedral, looking at his life, where he's coming from, and how he has walked with, with the Lord, you realize a life of integrity, a life that has been composed, and a life that has been uh, focused on the goodness of the Lord. As you look at him in church, you see a man of humility serving the Lord in all corners of the church. We see him singing in the choir, a member of Anglican Flames, and you wonder, yes, he was there. You see him as an assistant warden collecting the offertory in church. You see him as a secretary to council. You see him running with all the business of the church. And we give glory to the Lord for his life. That his life has lived, he has lived a life of a testimony. And for us that have seen him, whether for a short time or for a longer time, we all have the same testimony of his faithfulness and his love for the Lord. And so we are talking about a person that knew about the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, who knew the power of the resurrection, who knew that one time he will go into glory. And when he goes into glory, that power of the resurrected Lord will raise him again. And we are confident and assured that even as we mourn now, he is in glory and celebrating together with the Lord. But that does not stop us to have the confusion, the pain, the tears like Mary had. Mary knew that Jesus was going to rise again, but Mary was confused. She stood out crying, and she saw angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus was laying. Mary was crying, but he was crying in the presence of the Lord. Then we have the comfort because he is the only source of comfort that we know. So this lady, as she kept weeping, she's looking at um, um, she's looking at, at around the grave, and this day she's asked, "Why are you weeping?" And she said to them, "They have taken my Lord." and I do not know where they have laid him. She was so confident, and she knew what she was looking for. 
Friends, brothers and sisters, at such a moment as this, we need to know where our source of comfort and confidence is. And having said this, she turned around and she saw Jesus. Behold, Mary was looking for nothing except Jesus. But at such a moment, she could not understand Jesus. When we go through a moment like this, sometimes you cannot understand Jesus. Sometimes you're asking Jesus, where are you? Why is this going on? What is happening in my life? But Jesus continued to make it very, very clear to Mary. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? And whom are you seeking? Jesus turns to Mary Magdalene and is asking her, Why are you weeping? And whom are you seeking? Mary was very clear because she has an answer. He said to him, thinking that he was a gardener, and she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away. Mary assumed that everyone actually needs to know Jesus. You know, friends, Many times at such a point as this, when we are at a funeral like this, the assumption that each one of us must know Jesus, because death reminds us that we are actually going to Jesus, that when tomorrow I die, I must go to Jesus. So as Mary is seeking, she has the assumption that everyone knows about Jesus. And so he tells Jesus, he's not telling him, I am looking for Jesus, but he's saying, you know what I'm looking for? I am desperately looking for Jesus. Dear friends, at such a moment, we are desperately looking for Jesus. We are looking to Jesus because our encouragement and strength is in Jesus alone. And Jesus said to her, Mary, and she burned and turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabon, which means teacher. And Jesus said to her, do not cling to me, for I have not ascended to my father. Mary has finally found the solution to her search. I pray my sisters, my brothers, as we are here. Yes, we know that justice has done a lot in our lives. We are now in a point of searching to see who Jesus is in, in, at such a moment. We are in a search to discover what can Jesus do in my life. This was the search that Mary was up to. And Mary finally saw Jesus. And Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. My prayer and my challenge to all of us, that as we listen to the testimony of Justice Kakuru, we are going to see the Lord. As we listen to his life of integrity, we are going to see the Lord. Many times we look at people come and go, and we do not have anything to emulate about them. When we see people that have walked, loved, and lived with the Lord, you want to emulate them. And what makes justice unique is that he saw the Lord. And if he saw the Lord, and the Lord changed his life, and the Lord transformed his life, and now he has gone into glory to be with the Lord, what more do we need except to see Jesus? Jesus says in this very gospel of John that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. My dear friends, many times we live in the world forgetting that there is only one way to heaven. And the way to heaven is through Jesus Christ our Lord. And that is the reason for which we need to see Jesus we need to feel Jesus. We need to understand who Jesus is. We need to taste the goodness of the Lord. We need to trust that this journey is not an empty journey. The journey you are walking is not a journey in vain. You are not walking an aimless journey. We are walking in this world knowing that we have a destiny. Paul himself says, in, which means the life that I'm going to live here, I'm going to sacrifice it for the good, live out my testimony. I'm not going to compromise my life. And that is what we saw in Justice Kakuru. Because he knew the Lord. 
the Lord was much more than his profession. The Lord was much more than everything he earned. He knew the Lord and he had a living testimony. Dear brother and sister as you sit here, what is your testimony? Are people going to think about what to say about you? Are they going to gather statements or they have the evidence of your integrity? Mary Magdalene reminds us that in desperate situations, you need to see Jesus. And when you see Jesus, the evidence of Jesus' life walks with you and lives in you wherever you go, whatever you do, whatever you say. And that is why Justice knew where his location was. Despite all other things that he has done for the nation, whatever that he has done in the judiciary, the commitment that he had to his work, one factor remained constant. He knew Jesus. My friends, it is possible for us to concentrate on the many things that we do in this world. But when death comes, they never count. When death comes, Jesus never looks at your paper. Jesus looks at your faith. Have you had your faith in me? Did you see me while you were alive? Did you recognize me? Did you accept me as your Lord and Savior? And if you have that, then heaven is open. And dear friends, it is in heaven that we are going to live for the rest of our lives. The lives that we have here are temporary. It is a short span of life. We thank God for justice from the years that God has given him. Many of us are not going to make these years. But one thing we turn back and say, God, whether I make up these years, whether I make a hundred years, where is my destination? Do I have heaven? Do I have everlasting life? The Bible says that Jesus told the disciples that I'm the resurrection and the life if you believe in me. You will never die, but you will live forever. Friends, we need Jesus. Because we need life. And it is only Jesus that gives life beyond the grave. We need the understanding that at the time when we breathe our last, the Lord takes the soul and we remain with the body. Right now, we cannot pray for justice. We are praying for ourselves to be strengthened because his life is already with the Lord. What we have is the body that has remained for us. But the life in him, the life that counts in heaven, is the life that God has already taken. May God give us the grace to see Jesus during this time of the funeral. May God help us to examine ourselves and be able to live out a life of integrity. May God help us to be a living testimony let your life be gathered together, whether you are in the office or at home, whether you are to work or wherever, can someone testify that you have lived a life of integrity. It is our prayer that the Lord will continue to speak to us through the life of his servant. That the Lord will enable us and enlighten us and give us the grace to find favor before him. Whatever that you do, outside Christ does not make sense. Whatever job or profession that you have outside Christ, it does not make sense. But when you add on Christ, you know that when you are here, you are serving the Lord in your profession. And at the end of the day, you are also going to inherit the eternal glory. I pray that the Lord will overshadow us. We continue to pray for Aunt Charity. We continue to pray for the rest of the family. And we are trusting that God will be able to bless uh, the children and be able to encourage them. But above all, to help them to see the Lord even in this trying time. To touch the Lord even in this trying time. To trust the Lord even in this trying time. Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 3 to 5. He says, trust in the Lord and lean not on your own understanding. We are trusting that during this time, we are going to trust the Lord for encouragement, for strength, for grace, for mercy, and that the Lord will be able to fill us with his joy. 
And this is what Jesus told his disciples after Mary had seen the Lord. Then Jesus started appearing to his disciples. And when he came and stood among them, he said, Peace be with you. And he repeated it again at verse 21. Peace be with you. The peace that we desire at such a moment as this is not a peace that comes from anything else. It's not a peace that you take a bottle of beer and you go to sleep. It's not a peace that you smoke something and you go to sleep. That is not a peace. The peace that we desire is the peace that comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. When we see the Lord, then we have the source of peace. May God give us such peace that we are able to settle in that peace as we go through this hard and trying time. May the Lord bless you. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Mom Provost, for this powerful message calling us to trust in the Lord. Friends, we are going to pray after singing one stanza of the song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. And our prayer is going to focus on stay in the Lord in difficult circumstances. Mary Magdalene is asked the question, why are you weeping? And as we are here, we'll ask, why are you weeping? Some of us may actually not just be weeping because justice has left us. Maybe we are weeping because we are failing to get treatment to these diseases that maybe each one of us here is carrying. How do you stay in the Lord amidst difficult circumstances? Circumstances of diseases where the most equipped most land doctors have failed to offer a solution. How do we stay in the Lord when day and night we are tortured and we are wondering, where is this God? Why are you weeping? What a friend we have in Jesus is on page 31 and his song 78. Stanza 1. And then we shall pray. in difficult circumstances of disease diseases without number is it diabetes is it blood pressure is it cancer is it whatever the disease that doctors have diagnosed our peace is lost our peace is taken away we are left in wonder we are left in confusion even when we have every wealth, even when we have every ability to get that treatment, Lord, we see death getting closer. And we wonder, Lord, who will give us peace in the circumstances we are in? Friends, you could be here and you are saying, I am at that point where like Mary Magdalene, in my heart I am weeping. When I go to my bed, I weep. I look at circumstances and I cry 
I wonder where the solution is coming from. Right now, maybe I have a relative in some hospital. Right now, myself, I have been diagnosed by a circumstance, by that I, I, there is a disease, and I'm wondering where will peace come from? Where will healing come from? Where will joy come from? The Lord Jesus. And in him alone shall we find peace. Thank you, Lord, that the person for whom we gather this evening, Justice Kenneth, while he lived, he taught us not to find peace anywhere in this world, not in our professions, not in our wealth, not in our friends, but only in you, our Lord. He served you in the church as a servant helping other people. He served you in this nation crying and pleading for justice for your people. He served you in his home as a father, as a husband, as an uncle, as a guardian. Lord, help us to find peace only and only in you, our Lord and our Savior. That when time comes and we are gone, there will be a testimony of our legacy that while we lived, we found peace in the Lord and we served the Lord and his people. Friend, you could be here and you are saying, I don't know this Jesus. I want to invite this Jesus that Justice Kenneth invited in his heart and allowed in his heart and gave him that peace. Maybe you are that person saying, I've been far away from God. I have lost the integrity of serving God and serving my nation. The Lord Jesus comes to you and asks, why are you weeping? He's ready to restore you. We would like to invite people here today to know the Lord Jesus Christ, the friend in Jesus, upon whom we bring all our sins, all our griefs, the one who bears them all and grants us peace. Father, thank you that you are here for us all. And we all seek to know you, to serve you, and to walk with you. So if you are here and you are saying, today, as we gather at the home of the late Kenneth Kakulu, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to surrender my life to Jesus. All my worries, all my concerns, and all my fears, I bring them to Jesus as I give my life to him. It is very fine. I'm sure Kenneth will be very happy when he comes now and sees our hands up as we say, we want to know you, Jesus. We want to give our lives to you, Jesus. So with our eyes closed and we're remaining in prayer, Lord, you know every heart here, you know every circumstance that we are all facing. As we examine our lives, help us, Lord, like Justice Kenneth, to put off our status, because status we shall live in this world to put off all these fears that imprison us and open our hearts and our lives to you. So you are that person saying, I am opening my heart and my life to the Lord Jesus that he becomes all Lord. Put up your hand where you want to pray with you. I'm surrendering my life. Somebody's peace. 
on this evening, upon this day, in this circumstance. Lord, let your peace reign in every heart here, in every life here, in every person here. Let your peace reign in the home of the late Kenneth. Let your peace reign in the heart of charity and these wonderful children. In Samantha's heart, in Tracy's heart, in Rosie's heart, in Ruthie's heart. Lord, these twin boys reign, Lord, in their lives. All the children in here, the beneficiaries in here, the many people in Uganda, now in the villages in Mbarara who are saying, the Lord Jesus grants us that peace. Father, how we pray that peace will come and will reign in this home. How we pray, King of Kings, that we that have come here this evening no matter the kind of disease diagnosed in our lives, that we find the peace of God and a joy in Christ Jesus and walk majestic knowing that the Lord is with us. And when God is with us, nothing will be against us. Lord, we pray that Justice Kenneth Kakulu, who has now left this world, that your peace will continue to reign in this home and that you alone will be the father in this home, that you alone will be the husband to charity, that you alone, God, you will bring peace in this nation, Uganda, in the judiciary where he sat, that, Lord, you alone will sit and guide and give wisdom. We have many trials and temptations, there are troubles all around us. In you alone, Lord, do we bring this in prayer. So we are now going to sing stanzas two and three of the same song. What a friend we have in Jesus. As in our hearts and in our lives, we bring all these diseases and all these circumstances that cause us fear unto him. Have we trials and temptations? <laughs> in your arms that while still in this world the Lord Jesus himself declared this in John chapter 16 verse 33 in this world you will have many troubles fear not I have overcome the world Lord may your love shield us while still in this world 
protecting us from all the arrows and the flames of the enemy and guarding us from all these kinds of diseases and attacks that are all around us. Giving us that sure confidence that the Lord who fights with us is the one who on the cross said it is finished. The one who when he was bowed overcame death. He resurrected and because he lived we shall face tomorrow. Lord Jesus, may you speak to each one of us and giving us that firm assurance and confidence that you are with us and that you will grant us victory. In Christ Jesus our Lord, we have prayed. Amen. Let's give God a big hand clap. Let's continue in prayer. Father, we thank you because you are God of peace. We surrender to you this evening, Lord. You know how your servants, oh God, are feeling once again deep down in their hearts. Father, we want to dedicate the remaining programs into your hands. We want to give to you the service that is going to be happening at the cathedral tomorrow into your hands. We want to commit to you the journey going to Barara into your hands. We want to pray, Lord Jesus, for all the services that are going to happen back home. We surrender to you, Lord. We want to pray for protection along the road. Lord, protect your people as they will be traveling. Jehovah God, we pray that you take over. Consume us, Lord, with your presence, King Jesus. Give us a peaceful time, Lord, as we say farewell to your servant. And now, Lord, you who has promised peace to all of us, we pray that you will receive that peace now. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessings of God Almighty, God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. May this blessing be upon charity. May this blessing be upon all the children. May this blessing be upon the grandchildren and the entire family. May this blessing keep all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Praise be to the Lord. We're going to sing a song. And then after that, we'll hand it over to the MC to take us in the next part of the evening. Thank you so much, our dear Provost. We are going to have a song that has been requested by the family. Kandi Nyagumizamu. That I've given my life to the Lord Jesus. That uh, the late Justice Kenneth Kakuru has left a legacy in this home as a believer. And the family is saying they will carry that on. Praise the Lord. I'm going to request us to stand so that we can sing this song with some bit of energy and attesting to the testimony of uh, uh, the late Justice Kenneth Kakuru, the one who everywhere he went, his faith carried on with him. Njomu Kristayo Kandi Njagu Mizamu. Tayo, Tiago Misamu, Ebiro Biona Picha Hakufa, Tiago Cristayo, Echo Linchi Hamia, No Munda Shechere Rensiona, Tiago Cristayo, O Mutima, Echi Sikisen. Cristo, oh, who ya bamba, kafa wanche, na nyeshe meri reku kunda, jomu Cristo yo, ni chinta ngaza, o kure wangu na nyenga juma, jomu Cristo yo, no hunda kwewe. Kwenka hi kwa horu kamba Jomu kristayo Kanjo murgwani Ninyo gomu yambi ya sitane Kwenka 
invite the MC to guide us in the other aspects of uh, this evening. Thank you very much, Church. Thank you very much, Church. Thank you very much, Church. Uh, we are now going to have small speeches. We now have people who want to travel. It's late. Uh, amid the stars, we have the principal judge and the entire judiciary. But you will excuse us, you will be speaking later. I will first invite one of our family members, Joseph Arnitwe Bariam Jura. You first come and uh, address the congregation. Uh, the church, uh, the provost, uh, mine is uh, just to welcome everybody on behalf of uh, Uncharity, uh, uh, the girls, uh, the kids, uh, and the family. Uh, we, we are deeply uh, devastated. Uh, we are heartbroken. Uh, we we we, can't, we still can't believe that uh, uh, Uncle Kakuru uh, has gone. Uh, but Saint Paul teaches us uh, not to mourn like people of the world. Uh, so we we really are keeping our hopes uh, in Him. Uh, but uh, please continue to pray for the family. It's. Uh, it's a very uh, hard time. Uh, all of us are trying to uh, keep a brave face, uh, but deep inside, uh, uh, we are really hurting uh, and in pain. Uh, so on uh, behalf of the family, we thank you very much uh, for 
We thank you very much for uh, for being with us. Um, ever since the the tragic news broke, um, please continue uh, comforting the family. Um, even after all this uh, is is done, uh, just uh, a few words, really. Um, uh, Ankakuru wore many hats, um, but to us, uh, he was a f first and foremost. To us, uh, he was a family man. Uh, and uh, as the Chief Justice said today, and uh, I think the principal judge uh, who I first saw today at the session where he was honored, uh, Uncle Kakuru had a, a reputation of being very um, tough, uh, very serious. Uh, but underneath all that, uh, he was a, a very soft, loving, uh, caring person. And uh, many of us are actually uh, a product uh, of his love. Uh, he has helped many people who are even not his relatives. Uh, there are many stories of uh, people even as far, I know there are some, like two or three people in Soroti that he never knew, uh, paid school fees for them. Uh, one of them I'm told is uh, in, in the judiciary. And he never um, uh, you know, drew attention to himself. Uh, that was always one of his gifts. So Ankakuru was a very loving man. That said, he was also a very principled person, extremely uh, principled. Um, and sometimes, you know, that uh, ruffled some feathers uh, because once he made up his mind, uh, that was it. But that also uh, was also one of a very good virtue. Um, he was a sibling, um, a, a husband, uh, uh, and, and a father. Uh, for me, uh, and I'll, for now I'll just be a bit selfish and speak about myself. Um, the, what struck me most was his uh, intellect. Uh, he was an extremely uh, gifted person. You know that people have different gifts and there are some people who are uh, gifted, uh, you know, with the uh, uh, intelligence culture, uh, very intelligent people. He, he, he was that kind of, of person. Uh, and even, so I always, uh, when he was not lecturing me about um, philosophy and history, and so he, he was so widely read, and so he would uh, uh, talk about the Roman Empire to Alexander the Great, to the Egyptian pyramids, and I mean, uh, even in January, where I had some time, we were talking about uh, the, the great Russian empire, uh, you know. So he, he was so, so uh, well, well versed and so well read. And uh, for those people who would like, you know, who are stimulated by uh, people like that, it was always uh, uh, a great pleasure to be in his presence because, you know, he was just, uh, uh, flowing with, with knowledge. So for, for me, I, I miss that because there are very few people who uh, have those kinds of, 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 of breadth and, and, and it comes naturally. Uh, so, uh, so much to say about Ankakuru. As I say, we are, we are still in shock. Um, but uh, we, we will have to move on. Um, uh, that's, that's the reality. Uh, but um, also this afternoon, I, I really was impressed by uh, the, what the judiciary did for him uh, because one of his virtues actually was that he was a fairly very private person and he never always wanted too much attention to himself. Uh, so, but I'm happy that the judiciary today were able to uh, have a special session for him where he was honored. Uh, and where all the things that were said about him are absolutely correct. That he had integrity, that he was principled, that he didn't, uh, he was not vindictive, 
the Chief Justice was very clear that even when, you know, on the bench they didn't agree, uh, you know, it ended there after the decisions, they would go and have lunch. So that, that is, even us at the family member, sometimes you'd have very heated discussions, but he would never uh, take it to his heart. That's, that, that I, I, uh, we can affirm. Um, that he was not a vindictive person, that he was a loving person, that uh, he was academically uh, gifted. I mean, you've seen, uh, you've seen uh, some of his uh, judgments. Uh, I'm, I'm not a lawyer, I'm a banker, but I, I, I always read his judgments. Um, and uh, some of my uh, 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 lawyer friends tell me that they enjoy his, 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 his judgments because his judgments were very deep. Uh, as some of the young law students reading his judgments were able to learn. So, you know, uh, he, he was that kind of person that, that everything that he, he did, he did it so, uh, so well. Um, so I would really uh, like to thank God uh, for his life. Um, although uh, it was very short, uh, God has uh, really we had wanted that maybe he lived up to 90 or 100. Uh, but um, uh, God has decided otherwise. Um, we, we, we will pledge to continue his legacy again and as, as, as the judiciary said that his legacy actually at, at least from the legal, legal fraternity has been cemented in the uh, decisions that in the judgments that he made. I mean that's a living testimony. His judgments are all, all, almost all his judgments were landmark judgments. Uh, and that was because he, he you know, was very deliberate, uh, very thorough. So I think that's his legacy. I mean, his, uh, his children and all of us are happy that uh, this legacy is, uh, is, is cemented. I mean, it's there forever. Uh, his children can read it, can be inspired, uh, that they had a great dad. Uh, some of us, it was not our physical dad, but we're happy that we, you know, uh, we shared our lives with such a, a great man. So, uh, let me stop here, uh, but we thank you very much for being with us. Uh, and I'll give uh, an opportunity to other people to speak. Um, my name is uh, Joseph Farini Tuebariamjura, and that is my wife, Paula Farini uh, um, we, uh, we will be informing you of uh, the speeches, I mean of the, the people who are going to speak, but also the program. Uh, we will have uh, church tomorrow at All Saints at 9. Uh, then after church, after the uh, church service, we'll travel to Mbarara in Rebshuri, uh, have an overnight vigil. Um, as you know, Ankakuru was actually uh, I think if he could, he would have loved to stay more out of uh, a capital city. Uh, he, he, he loved nature. I mean, all of you know he was an environmentalist. Uh, he loved nature. He loved his cows. Uh, but he also loved the, 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 the local people. Uh, uh, the local people. That's where he really tr truly felt uh, at home. Uh, so. Uh, tomorrow at Reb Shiri, we will have time. We will have he'll have time with his people uh, at Reb Shiri in Imbarara, where he'll spend time with them. Uh, also, eulogizing him, and then on Saturday we'll have a service at Roharo, and that will be concluded by uh, uh, by by, bar on, by barring by burial on 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 Saturday. Um, I'd now like to ask um, Stephen. Reverend Steve, um, to come and give a few words. Uh, Reverend Steve is uh, an old friend, really, and actually grew up with uh, Uncle KK. Uh, so very many childhood uh, mem memories. Uh, Uncle Donald Nyakiru here also. Um, we remember as young kids growing up, you know, Uncle Donald was always with him already. Uh, so. Uh, let me stop here and give others a chance. Uh, please, whoever would like to speak uh, about Ankokakuru, uh, please, uh, you're free to speak.
tomorrow we'll have very limited time at, at church, uh, but now we have some time uh, to really uh, pour out our hearts and thoughts. Uh, thank you very much. Reverend. Let's give a hand clap to Omramzi Kenneth Kakuru. Mbere ni mrewa nka mkuru wanje omiringo minji he i saw him or i've been seeing him as my elder brother in more ways than one we share we shared school he was much ahead of me in primary school but we interacted i was in a lower class he was in a higher class but he was extremely intelligent and very calm and gentle. He was in every way a diplomat. As we grew up together, our fathers were serving in the Anglican Church in Ankoli Chigezi Diocese. And as a result, we grew up under the Christ culture, the culture of Tukutendereza, parents who knew the Lord, and raised us to fear and love the Lord. So Kenneth Kakuru shared with us the Christ culture as we were growing up. Fearing God, going to church, respecting the elderly, growing in a family, and recognizing that family is important. That's how we grew together with Kenneth. Now, Kenneth became more intimate to me when I chose to become a clergyman because his father was a clergyman, my father was a clergyman, but when I decided to go into the ministry of the church, church he encouraged me, became close to me. He supported my work at the cathedral in Roharo and he made it a point to visit me and encourage me. And he also encouraged me in my marital journey. I took a number of years before I got married, but he was with me in making a choice of a wife, and he supported me in my wedding. He became an elder brother to me. Um, Kenneth, not only that, he counseled me. He had a counseling skill. He was gifted in that area. Talking to you very lovingly and carefully and challenging you. Even sometimes rebuking you. But with a caring and loving heart. And so Kenneth, I know him as somebody who would take you to heart and love you deeply and tell you what he thinks. Whether it hurts you or not, he will say it. That's who he was to me. I knew in my heart that Kenneth would leave to, his, to, to see his evening years because his mother lived and lived and lived to a hundred I knew that Kenneth would live just likewise. But now look, look what's in the box there. Nkam nyuan wa Kenneth na charity, naba anabe. Because I've been here all of the time. I was here to preside at the funeral vigil of Mama Rose, the mom. I was there as a master's of ceremonies at Kenneth's to charity. I was here several functions sharing intimately with Kenneth and the family. We sincerely will miss Kenneth Kakuru. And I want you to know in that box is the body of one who was a citizen of integrity, a native of trustworthiness, in whom there was no guile. And so we shall live to emulate that example. 
mwebare okwija kushabani to mwabazio may god be bless you thank you very much reverend for that wonderful eulogy Okay. Um third we invite Aunt Hilda. Where is she? Is she yoko atere? Ugambar mnyanyoko. Jempora mpora. To ine mani. Kwa onkano zje kuma umbaru mukama. Eh jiramani. Amina. These are sisters. Thank you very much, Master of Ceremony. Good evening. Hey, I can't hear. Good evening, mourners. I greet you in the name of the Lord. As I have been introduced, I'm called Aunt Hilda. But my names are Hilda Kamjanzi Mpaire. I am married to Dr. Yusuf Mpaire. Kakuru is my sibling. We were 12 children in the family, but now we are left four. Now my siblings, Maria, Kariamjura, and John, Kamjanzi, Enoka is not here, he's in Barara. I stand here in the name of our father, Red Reverend Eliakim Kamjanzi, and his wife, Canon Rosa Kamjanzi. My father was one of the first nine priests in Ankole, one of them, to be a priest. Now I want to talk about Kakuru's family and so on. One day, my, my brother, my eight brother got a scholarship to go to study in London. So our father hired a car and took all of us to Kampala to the airport to see him off. My mother was expecting and we happened to have a relative who was a doctor Do, the late Dr. Delia Wengana is my cousin, was my cousin. So after that, he said, let's go and take your mother for an X-ray. When she went for an X-ray, they found that she was expecting twins. And we are already 10 children. So <laughs> they said that, the doctor said that, do you know what? You are very advanced. She was about 59. You can't go through this pregnancy. So what we are going to do, we are going to take away the children so that we can save your life. My mother said, no, me, I will die with my children. I will not let my children die. So we went back home and the pregnancy continued. When it was time for delivery, of course it was cesarean. And, me, and there was no body to help my mother. So my father came and picked me from school to go to the hospital and look after my mother. So by that time, there was no children's rights. I had to obey and go to look after my mother. When we were there, the children cried. I didn't know, I was also young. I didn't know what to do with the twins. This was crying, this one was crying. My mother was there looking after me. And what I did, I also sat and joined in the crying. <laughs> <laughs> My mother thought that was not going to work. <laughs> 
Anyway, that story has finished. Then, you know, the twins in Ankole, they have different names, Kato and Kakuru. One who comes first, they say called Ka Kakuru, and another one, Kato. So because this was a Caesarean, Kato was supposed to have come last, came first. And then Kakuru was supposed to come first, came last. So they named Ka Ka Kakuru Kato, and Kato Kakuru. Kakuru stayed being called Kato for quite some time until a visitor came and uh, greeted, uh, greeted us and the children went to greet him and so on. Then he observed and they called Kato, Kato. <coughs> the man said, this can't be. He tried to correct us and when they told him about the story, we thought that that was right. So Kakuru became Kakuru. Kato <laughs> changed the name and then Kato became Kato. Kakuru has been always very different. He was a very obedient right from the beginning. As I said, that there were nine boys and three girls. So, and yet he was the last. So the other boys would not, behave, would not obey quickly. They would just look at him. Whatever they say, Kakuru will obey, Kakuru will do what? Kakuru knew all the work to do it, could even ground the mirror to mingle the mirror, do everything. But the other boys would laugh at him. But then, one day, there was this recruiting of people in the army. Boys went, Kakuru went. But when he reached there, my father was, just went to tell the people who was recruiting, if he could spare at least one of them. Kakuru was willing not to be recruited. He came back home and studied and became a lawyer. So that is how Kakuru was. Very hardworking, very obedient, and so on. So, Kakuru looked after us very well. During that time of Amini, my sister, my sibling, Mrs. Mary Wariam Jura, lost her husband just maybe a day before she delivered her second child, her third child. And then Kakuru took over of looking after those children. He used to amuse, his, amuse us and say that I became a father when I was 18 years old. And Joseph is one of those who are looked after Kakuru. So Kakuru continued to be good and very respectful. Kakuru would not call me or call my husband. He would just come himself in person. Or he would not send any email. He would come in person and talk to us. So Kakuru's character was formed like that from the farm ground. Those of you who knew my father, he was also like that. But when you I, all of you who are here, you have contributed in Kakuru's work in life. Some of the work, the work could be very difficult with challenges. But when you choose to work the way Kakuru chose, those challenges, they have got their repercussions. And you have to be ready to sort them out. So, he said, you will not barge. You will do what you think was right. And that's all those contributed to his character and also to the way we are brought up from home. So we miss Kakuru very much. We are going to miss him very much. And people have been calling me and saying that he will die now. What are you going to do? What, what, what? I said, no, even Moses, did not lead the children of Israel to the promised land. God chose Joshua. And God has already chosen Joshua to lead us. With that firm ground and the values which were installed in us by our parents, we are ready to stand. And there are so many of us. I'm so proud of all those, my nephews, my nieces, they are all seated here. So even we can't fail to look after Kakuru's children, charity, 
sit behind and be assured you are in a firm family which has formed on a strong background. To be, to live a straightforward life and serve the Lord. I want to thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you very much, Auntie. We now invite our elder from the Nganwa family. You come and address us. Um, this is indeed a very, very difficult time. Up to now, I cannot believe it is KK, as we call, uh, you, we, we call him, is the person lying in that coffin before us. Kakuru was much younger than me. I think he was 10 years younger than me. But we are very good friends. We are very good friends. And I liked his qualities. We were in the same profession. We shared same passion um, as um, environmentalists because I was very keen. Actually, that's how I left the bench because I was then, um, I was uh, uh, chief judge in the industrial court. By that time, we had this lofty title of president of industrial court, but it was turned down. And uh, now it's uh, chief judge of the industrial court. But when the NRM government came in, they convinced me that I should help start the Ministry of Environment as a permanent secretary. They said it would be one year and I would go back. But that was not to be. After one year, I went to the authorities, highest authorities. I said, now can I go back to my former job? I said, oh, no, no, no. Assist us. Because that's when about uh, the Constitutional Court, I mean the Constitutional Commission. The Odoki Commission was being formed. They said, okay, um, you go and uh, assist in the Ministry of Constitutional Affairs as a permanent secretary. Uh, things were really turning around. I could see I was going in the mainstream civil service. But it was Kakuru Young as he was, who was encouraging me. He said, no, you go. Um, he will come later because he was passionate about the environment uh, because he knew I was a person of integrity and there was a lot of money in constitutional affairs. He said you are the only permanent secretary who can manage because I know you won't touch anything. These were words of um, encouragement and I really felt very proud that um, people of integrity like Kakuro also held me in high regard. But this evening, very briefly, I will talk about Kakuro in the family context. I don't know how I can convince people who are here, we who knew his father, Reverend Kamjandizi, 
And we saw Kakuru, we know where he came from. Reverend Kamujand was a very, very intelligent man, very principled, and he contributed a lot to the church, and very controversial, very, very controversial, very. When I listened the other day uh, 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 to, I think it was, uh, what is this radio? Is it NTV? Uh, what is it? Is it? What is it? They were. <coughs> they were. Uh, um, they featured him in some of his judgments. One of them was uh, one on the removal. Uh, age limits. I could see his father. <laughs> That was his father, the way he was talking. In fact, uh, Hiroda here, my sister, talked about um, um, his brother, Aret Manuel, uh, who was one of the first uh, college students to go to the UK. There was a lot of controversy. Hiroda might not remember. Because there was a son of our king, the Mugabe, who was the same age, about the same age, who had qualified, and Kamjandi's son, Manuel, had also qualified. So they were, the son of uh, the king was going to the UK for further studies. Kamjandi was not amused very much because his son had also done very well. I think this was one of the biggest battles my father fought because he said, yeah, no, this one is the son of a king. He has done well. And I think in Ankara would feel proud to have a king who is a graduate. Many of Ankara said no. But my father insisted. He said, now, you leave it to me. Kamjandi's son, was all, we were also go. he was in Gansi Katikiro. And he made sure both of them went for their studies to the UK. But you should have seen Kakuru's, I mean, uh, Kakuru's father uh, on that occasion when there was that controversy. But it was sorted. It was sorted. Very many meetings where his father went in synod, he would really debate very intelligently. And I think when we buried uh, Kakuru's mother, who was over 100, I told you of a story. When the debate became so heated that my father had to be summoned to come in, and they said, you are the only one who can manage Reverend Kamjandzi. And indeed, he came. I remember very well. I was still a child. I mean, not a child, I was about 14. My father, he drove himself for that occasion. He had a driver, but he had to drive very quickly to our synod hall. You don't know, I can't, I don't know whether you remember it. The, that's why we used to have Sunday school. And he went in uh, to come, river and come, because things were getting too hot. And he sort of he managed to defuse the crisis. So when I see Kakuru lying here, and then I remember his father, I know where we are coming from. But as they said, I was not there, unfortunately, I couldn't go. Um, Kakuru, tough as he seemed, he was very soft. And now here I will go into thanks. Kakuru, thank you very much for 
bringing up your siblings, children. Maria here, they talked about lost the husband very brutally by the Amini regime, but Kakuru picked up Maria's hand and supported her. And the Maria you see here is, must be very, very grateful to Kakuru, and we are all very grateful. Kakuru, thank you very much for looking after the children of your brothers, of your sisters. Thank you very much. I will end by referring to the great attributes of Kakuru, integrity, integrity, integrity. He is one person who judged without fear or favor, and he had all the attributes of a good judge as defined more than 2,000 years ago by Socrates. I can't remember the four attributes, but Kakuru had all of them. One of them was actually the sum of it, sum it up, is judge without fear or favor. Kakuru, you succeeded in doing that. We thank you very much for coming here to support us at this very difficult time. Um, I will not talk very much about the charity because I don't even have, I have even not faced her because I feel so saddened by what happened, but with the grace of God, we will manage. Charity, you will manage, and all of us, Kakuru's friends, with God's grace, we will manage, and you just keep us in your uh, uh, prayers. I end by thanking Maria for looking after Kakuru Charity. Thank you very much. The daughters of Kakuru, thank you very much. Uh, Bariam Juaz, thank you very much for taking care of Kakuru. At least we are comforted that he was comfortable in his final journey. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mzei, for that wonderful speech. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are almost coming to an end. The family has prepared dinner, but I request we are remaining with only three speeches. One speech from Moab. Yeah, another from the best friend, Justice Reme Kasure. Then the last will be the principal judge. But before we seek leave, let me first.
as our have been directed as a friend, a brother gets ready to come and give a speech on behalf of the friends, I want to first recognize the following people amongst ourselves. We have Honorable Justice Dr. Flavian Zaidia, the principal judge. Honorable Justice Passet Haise. Justice of the Supreme Court. Retired Justice Erdad Mwangusia, Justice of the Supreme Court. Retired Justice Remy Kasure, Court of Appeal. Honorable Justice Monica Mugenyi, Court of Appeal. Honorable Justice Damari Rwanga, Justice of the High Court. Just uh, Honorable Justice Winfred Nabisinde, Justice of the High Court. Honorable Justice Susan Abinho. Honorable Justice Linda Tumsime, Head Judge Industrial Court. Justice uh, Syria Nagawa, Justice of the High Court. Honorable Justice Emmanuel Maguma, Justice of the High Court. Finally, Justice Oscar Chika, Court of Appeal. Uh, you will excuse me if there are others, but these are the people I have on the list as judges. Others, we shall be recognizing them at a later stage. At a later stage. I now invite the friend, Honorable Justice Remy Kasure, to talk on behalf of the friends. We meet this evening on a very sad note because the Lord in his own ways has decided to call to himself, to me in my judgment, one of the greatest Ugandans we have been having, particularly in the area of doing justice to those who must receive justice. I did not have much interaction with Justice Kenneth Kakuru by way of education, by way of upbringing, because both of us came from different parts of the country and from very different backgrounds. But we met, and the Lord brought us together 
through the legal profession. Both of us were practicing lawyers, and both of us were blessed by the Lord of having been in positions of leadership of the legal profession. Justice Kakuru in respective ways, and myself also in respective ways as president of the Uganda Law Society, as chairperson of the Law Council, member Judicial Service Commission, and also external lecturer or direct, uh, 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 examiner at the Law Development Center. And then, in representing respective clients before both of us joined the judiciary. It is those qualities that I saw and experienced in Justice Kakuru as a lawyer, as a disciplined person, and as someone who, when it comes to dispensing justice, will not fail to be independent. We will not fear, we will not consider whether someone is going to say something abusing him or whether someone is going to say something praising him. He looked for justice and he rendered justice both as a legal practitioner and both as a member of the bench. And he did so variantly. Professions, including the legal profession, must act in accordance with the values, with the principles, and with the tenets of the respective professions. Tragically, in Uganda today, and this is personal to me, I may be wrong, but tragically today, we in the pro respective professions are failing to carry out those responsibilities. In the legal profession, so much is getting out of what we must do. So much is happening that is causing so much injustice, particularly to those who do not have the means and do not have the status to be recognized by those of us who have the means, who have the power, and usually who dictate matters over what the population must do. Justice Kakuru has been exceptional. He will tell what he finds to be necessary to render justice and he will tell that to anybody and he will take action to ensure that justice is rendered to the one who deserves to have it. 
those are rare qualities and those are the qualities that brought me very much to admire Justice Kakuru. I, have, I am older than him, but he had those qualities and I admired them and we came together. We have had differences and uh, we have had disagreements but we have always been guided by the commitment to do justice and uh, as we say goodbye to him as he departs from us let those values that he has been standing for, that we have been admiring from him, let those values become part of the principles we must follow, those of us whom the Lord is still keeping alive. It is only that way that we shall be able to create and to enhance a society which respects the values of life, which respects the happiness of us created by God and who have every right, never mind the economic conditions each one of us may have, never mind the circumstances, social or otherwise, that we may be living in. Justice Kakuru has been a disciple of justice, and may the good Lord rest his soul in eternal peace. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much, friend, and welcome it. Uh, before I invite the principal judge, allow me once again to recognize other VI VIPs. I had not recognized. Among us, we have Honorable Justice Patricia Waswa Basaza. Judge of the High Court. Thank you for coming. Uh, we have FDC Chairman Ambassador Waswa Birigua and the wife. We have Honorable Miriam Matembe and Mr. Matembe. Honorable Jova Kamateka. We have Mr. Frank Katsime and the Permanent Secretary, Doreen Katsime, Minister of Tourism. We have an investor, a farmer, and a seasoned lawyer, Mr. Enos Tumusime, among us ourselves. Others, I will recognize you later. I now take the pleasure to invite the principal judge.
Uh, dear mourners, let me not go into protocol. Otherwise, as, as you notice, I may, I may murder the protocol, as they say. So there are, there are different dignitaries, and uh, I may not go into that. Uh, I think I made my remarks today at the High Court when we were eulogizing our departed comrade. Uh, a lot was said. Usually when uh, someone dies, there is a tendency to say the good things. And sometimes people don't say the truth. But I can tell you with certainty that whatever was said about Justice Kakuru is true. <laughs> I, I mentioned the, uh, when I was the, the resident judge of Mbarara High Court. And uh, I was the head of the, of the circuit with two judges. And then uh, he, he would come in a casual, casual dress, just walk around and go away. I wasn't aware. Of course, even the people at the high court did not know that he was a judge. He did it a number of times. Then later he came to my chambers and he said, well, I have, uh, I've been coming here investigating you <laughs> and uh, trying to find out how you work. Uh, then I, I will not go much into the details of what I said. But uh, when he came to my chambers, then we discussed a lot of things, and uh, I discovered we had a lot of things in common. Uh, and uh, subsequently, we became friends, I must say. Uh, his humility is so, okay, was so touching. I remember when the mother was celebrating 100 years. I was there at his home and uh, he did not for once sit down. He was literally serving the guests himself. I, I remember I was, I think, with the, I seated with the dad, uh, retired justice, and he literally did not sit. He was serving a guest himself. And that was the humble Kakuru I knew and I still know. Now, in most cases, when we lose a relative, the first question you will say, oh, why me? I mean, why, why God? But, I mean, uh, when... Uh, you, you can liken the situation of losing a good person. Uh, you ideally would want God to take the bad ones, the thieves. Uh, th that's what we would wish. Now, you will be having uh, the, the most notorious thief in the village, and God will not take that one. Then he will come and pick the best, the person who has been helping people to go to school. That is the one God will pick. And then you, you always wonder, why has God left this one and taken the other one? But if you can imagine, if you had uh, goats in your farm and you got the best visitor, I don't think you would pick the worst. You would pick the best. And that is how we should look at God. Uh, and his ways are not our ways. The reason why he takes you when you are good would be the same reason why he also takes the bad ones or vice versa. So God's ways are not our ways. We cannot understand how he does things. We only have to believe and to know that there is life after death and there is a better place out there which we eventually go to. Yeah, so uh, I'm not going, I, I know of course tomorrow uh, and uh, thereafter uh, my colleagues, especially the Chief Justice and Deputy Chief Justice, will say more than what I w uh, I I'm, I'm saying. I don't want to take much of the time talking about uh, repeating what actually others have said. Uh, and I can assure you 
that there is no person here who, who, who pretended. Now, his openness, his boldness, I think one of the judges at the high court said that he, Kakuru was a Muchiga. <laughs> he was a Muchiga, but he, I think he was born in a wrong place in Ankori. Uh, you know, the, among the Pachiga, they, they, they raise you with the two qualities when you are growing up. Your parents will tell you, never keep a grudge. So when a Muchiga hates you, he will tell you there and then. He's not going to pretend. He will tell you there and then. And then he doesn't keep a grudge. So that's why sometimes they fight a lot. They fight and then after that, then they meet tomorrow and say, but yesterday you beat me, you man. Why? So I think that's why one of the judges, they, they described him as a Muchiga. Kakuru was exactly that. If you quarreled, no, no, I don't call it quarreling, disagreeing. He didn't take uh, mediocrity for, uh, uh, he didn't take me mediocrity rightly. I will tell you that when I was an advocate, I, I appeared on his panel. Now, if you were appearing on a panel which Kakuru was heading, you had to prepare. So you just come and start saying nonsense, and remember, behind you there is a client who thinks that you are serious. And you start uttering nonsense, he will, not, he will not wait for your client to go out. He will tell you there and then how hopeless you are. <laughs> so, so we would really prepare, prepare. If he asked you a question, you would be ready to answer. And uh, we, so we used to like him for that. And I'm sure, you see, when you are, when you are sitting at the, at the Court of Appeal and Supreme Court, these are what we call collegial courts. You don't sit alone like a high court judge. You sit in a team, either of three, or five, or seven at the Supreme Court, depending on the, on the, on the case. Now, that collegial court requires that you must have almost the same work ethics. So if one of you is that type who doesn't want to work, you cannot work with Kakuru. Because if you give him your draft, he will read it. Within three days, he has returned it. Now, if he gives you his and you take two months, he will not take that lightly. And that is why, even when we had our cases before him, we wanted, actually, if you were on a panel of Kakuru, you would want to, you know, to, you, you, each of us as lawyers, all, all of us would want to appear on his panel. So that immediately, you are sure that your judgment will come out sooner than later. You know lawyers earn through judgments. If you, if you, you, you the, the fruits of the judgment is what you earn from as a lawyer. So uh, I don't want to say much about Kakuru. For me, he was a personal friend. He used to come to my, ch every time he came at the high court, he would pass via my chambers and we would have a chat. So uh, rest in peace, my brother. May God give you the, the best that there is in heaven until we find you there for God and my country. Thank you very much, PJ. We are coming to an end of the speeches as per now, but eulogies will continue later. Let me first recognize these people who have just joined us. Amidst ourselves, we have Honorable Hanifa Kawoya, Minister of State for Health. Thank you for coming. We have Mrs. Jacqueline Mbabazi, the wife to former Prime Minister John Patrick Amama Mbabazi. Thank you for coming. Honorable Justice Orif Mukwaya Kazarwe, Justice of the High Court, thank you for coming. Uh, for time management, we are now going to have dinner, and I request, we are going to start from this side. I request we start by serving our 
visitors from the judiciary, but I will request. Okay. I'm told there is a short video in memory of Keke. Then after, I will ask the provost to again pray for our dinner. Thank you.